Welcome back everyone to the Let's Play Rule the Waves as Germany with the Auto Resolve Campaign episode number 5. I've only released episode number 3 so I'm just basically one episode, just one episode behind um, as far as like getting comments and feedback and stuff. Uh, I have updated myself to the version 5.04, I mean .504. <clears throat> This basically just allows my simulator to parse that small merchant file, which if you've seen in the command prompt window, which pops up, <clears throat> it's been given little warnings that that's what's going on, that it hasn't been able to parse that. So now it should. We should be good. And uh, we'll be using that one. So actually, I'll just remove the temptation to use the wrong one. That done. Let's get into the war. Ah, no. I want ASW. We have the, the means... That's for sure. Lots of ASW capability here. As I like to do. Just build a really cheap one. <clears throat> and get it going on. Uh, we have a lot of our battleships still under refit. The Verth class. Is it going to be the one stationed in Southeast Asia? Did I move the... I'm not sure if I'm going to move the other ones or not. Alright, let's see what kind of combats we have. Convoy attack. What? Two battleships versus two battleships? This is interesting. It's one. It's a Braunschweig. Verth class. Interesting. <clears throat> I think. Well, I don't. I mean, we'll just simulate it. <laughs> and several people have been asking. Ah, yeah, it's a new file, so we'll go ahead and run it. You will have that same issue if you're uh, just downloaded it. Just downloaded it for the first time. So this log.txt should be updated now. It's. Well, I'm recording at noon. Um, battle's over. Oh yeah, we did well. I mean, as you'd expect, this is still the conservative version. Now, several people have asked about um, making a little bit of a more aggressive simulator, and I can absolutely do that. And I, I not only, I will, because I, I have. There's two different things which I think would be useful to do. Um, one is make it a little bit more difficult for fleeing. Um, the enemy to retreat and the other one is um, to increase the courage the point at which people break and try to retreat so just to force people to why do I have these people in the Mediterranean they are not moving do they just get I don't really understand fleet battle oh, interesting Maybe a coastal raid we'll save this one as well So now I'm not seeing any pop-ups telling me that something's bad. Um, I guess they just retreated immediately. And we did a little bit of damage to one of their cruisers. And one of their light cruisers. And they do doesn't look like they did any damage to us whatsoever. There's a lot of stuff. I have not updated the behavior of the minesweepers though. That's one thing to consider. I think they just charge in like fools. Luckily, they're slow enough that it'll take them a while to get over there, but <laughs> still. <laughs> Alright. So, yeah, we did some damage. These battles, I mean, obviously, if the simulator was fed directly to the game, and the game knew that it was a simulation, it wouldn't have those, like, points for not sinking merchant ships. It would know that no, that really matters. My simulator doesn't take into account those kind of things. So, oh, this is interesting. This would be a good one. So this is where our Brandenburg class ended up. Okay. And then the Prusen, the Wittelsbach. Yeah, this would be fun. This should be a good one. I'm not getting any warnings in that box. really like that. Here we go. Uh, ooh, we lost four destroyers. But they lost five. And a light cruiser. <gasps> and a battleship! Our first battleship sink. So, anyways, um, people were asking me to just kind of slow down and explain what's going on here. So I'm just going to walk through this file uh, one time from start to finish. You have the beginning of the fleet battle. It says where the, the weather conditions, which are randomly generated right now, but I could and should probably pull this from the actual combat file 
because the combat file does have um, the weather restrictions in it. So I could do that. I kind of like the randomized <clears throat> side of things, but yeah, I mean, the game has done that for us, so let's just... <clears throat> probably the game's uh, version of what this is is better than mine, so I, I can just take that. The next thing is it just describes the two fleets, and the important thing is that each ship is given an offensive and defensive rating. So, for example, my uh, Vittelsbach is getting 2,000 offense almost and uh, 4,400 defense. Um, and we can compare that to my my uh, vessel... Oh, I forgot what these were. The Vessenberg? The Weisenberg? I don't remember what class of the Vittelsbach. Is this the Vittelsbach? No, the Vittelsbach was the Dreadnoughts. I forgot what this one is. Anyway, but they have 1250 versus... I mean, 19 versus 1250, 44 versus 4. It kind of makes sense that their defense is so high because I just really over-armored them since that's what I do with the early battleships. We go down to a light cruiser. This has an attack of pretty substantial, 580. Um, that's because they have the 8-inch guns. I mean, still less than half of a battleship, but... And, uh, you know, way less defense because, you know, they're way, uh, way less armored. Um, and then, you know, it goes down, we have the destroyers, when they're defense, they don't have an armor, so this is all just due to the, how fast they are. We list the same thing for the French fleet, and it shows the tonnage of the ships and everything. And then, uh, the, every round, we'll just break down round number, well, let's skip to round number, first let me expand this a little bit more so that we actually get everything in one line. Uh, okay, good, so this is just going to make it a little bit more orderly. Uh, let's go to round... Yeah, this round is fine. Round three, I think there's... Nope, nope. Oh, wait. We're trying to... We're withdrawing already? Twenty... What was the combat rating? 22,000. So 22,000 is pretty close. Okay. Well, let's just... Let's walk through round two, because this looks active. Everyone has their movement... Planned movement phase. So each division declares its intent to move forward or back. Um, the light cruisers and destroyers, if there are dreadnoughts or battleships or battlecruisers, try to fill an escort role, which means they aren't going to launch themselves forward. Then Fleet 2 does the same, lists the same thing. You can see that there's a lot of these ships are in escort roles. Um, even I link the armored cruisers as escorts because if they were to charge forward against battleships and battlecruisers, they would just be sunk. <clears throat> so I, I treat them as escorts. And then they've declare their movement, what they want to do, and while they're moving, they fire. Not while they're, this is actually before their movement is conducted. Uh, and we can see that, but this is just a comparison offense versus defense. We had one hit, the Prusin hit the Tourville, and did 3.3% of its, you know, floating capabilities as damage. Um, the Tourville actually hit the Celestian, and did 10%. So their guns, I didn't see what the battle cruisers are using here but yeah, their offense is probably a lot higher let's take a look real fast no not really so just an unlucky hit it looks like oh yeah there it is offense of 2400 Woo! oh my they got some a lot of guns on that thing <laughs> so yeah they have a lot of offensive capability um, and it did some damage now where were we fleet round two they did damage but a lot of the other ships missed um, I do also have just the same way that the boilers can, you know, be pushed, work too hard. I mean, the the crew can't shovel coal fast enough, whatever. There's random factors which ships will slow down. I don't extract all the coal usage or whatever, like how long you've been at um, high speed. None of that is uh, maintained in my simulator. Just there's a random chance that you don't go as fast as you wanted to. Uh, and then it continues in this exact manner until one fleet breaks and... Uh, ultimately, the end result. So uh, once we get down to the very end, usually at this point, everyone is fleeing. And if it says has sunk or left combat, that just means that I'm, it's no longer being considered in the uh, movement phase or in the attack phase. It's being withdrawn. Uh, this could be because they are all sunk, or it could be because they pulled at least 22,000 yards, whatever the spotting distance is, away from the enemy. I just immediately call them gone from battle at that point. So it's very easy to retreat. Um, you can see that ships will detach because the division only moves at the fastest at the speed of the slowest ship so um, my simulator takes into this into account it will detach ships if they're moving too slow 
And they, they will never reattach. I don't have like a reattach algorithm or anything like that. So just like in the real game that they do reattach, but I don't. Um, they stay separate. And usually what this means is it's a nice way for the enemy to pick off the stragglers. Um, so that we, this was a way to allow some more ships to be sunk. That basically if you're detached, the rest of your group is going to move forward. And um, range to target is one of the considerations for the prioritization of enemy targets. So if you're a little bit left behind, you'll be targeted more. And that was a one way of, yeah, as I said, getting more ships to be sunk. So that kind of walked you through it. Um, I didn't actually talk about the very, very end. I guess I should just mention when the battle ends, there's uh, every ship is listed for each fleet and their current remaining health. So we took a lot of damage here and lost a light cruiser and lost uh, another light cruisers, two light cruisers and four destroyers. Wow, we lost quite a fair amount, but they lost the Richelieu, which is um, obviously very good for us. Looks like they lost uh, a light cruiser, two destroyers, three, four, five. So we can then at the very, very bottom, the very last, basically out of the last four lines is the fourth and third to last. This gives you a summary. So we lost, you can see here, two of our four light cruisers, four of our destroyers, all lost. And they lost one of their three just battleships. They lost one of their light cruisers and five of their destroyers. So this was a successful engagement for us. Now we just load the game up back up. So there, I really went into the details. Um, I, I also hope that that showed there's a lot of depth to this simulator. I could have, what I was originally going to do, and what I originally did even, was just make a comparison of the two ships with their stats and just roll some random numbers and then, uh, you know, calculate how many ships are lost from both sides. And I believe if Gary is still watching, Gary from the, actually the World of Waves 2 beta team, he and I were discussing the finer points of, or well, not even discussing, I would say that we just had a very brief exchange about our own ideas and how to do things. And um, his that was his way of thinking about it too. It looks like I ended up losing a second light cruiser in the end. Um, but still should be very much in our favor, and it is. But again, the simulator seems to be really good. I mean, it seems to have given us like a very realistic result. I'm, yeah, I gotta say, I'm tickled pink by this thing. <laughs> anyway, uh, so his idea would have been this first way as well. And I actually, um, I kind of went with the law of large numbers approach that the more times ships are calculating you know shells and attacking and all this the more statistical your outcome will be i mean the more closely aligned to some general what you generally want to happen so if you roll a dice once you can get a one or a six um, but you want to average like a three or four right but if you average 10 rolls you're much more likely to be around a three or four so that's kind of like what the simulator takes advantage of. Anyways, we'll just keep moving here. And there it is. A peace is concluded with our signs gaining some concessions in minor territories. Great. Oh, and we get direct firing. Wow, that's actually perfect timing. This is wonderful. And since we're leaving the war mode, I will return us to a bigger screen. Let's make that location a lot bigger. Okay, so we need direct firing on a lot of things quickly. And uh, some other refits. I mean, we need to get the ships where they're supposed to be, not like, for example, in the Mediterranean. Move these guys to Southeast Asia. I don't know why their course was not plotted correctly, but the Brandenburg, that was it. The Brandenburgs are, yeah. I wonder why it's showing them in a weird way. Shouldn't they all be, well, whatever. Uh, just in time for our destroyers to arrive, and hey, right on the back of losing four of them. Now, another thing, I don't know if I already mentioned this, but people have expressed an interest. Hell, I expressed a huge interest in this when I first began playing World of Waves. One of the biggest things for me was other nations don't go to war with each other. So they sit with their fleet forever, and that means good things, bad things, whatever. I mean, sometimes it means that their fleet's obsolete, so you can defeat them. Sometimes it means that um, since they haven't lost any ships, they have a higher number of ships than you, so... Depends on how you want to think about it, but no matter what, I think that everyone would agree if other nations went to war from time to time, that would be a good thing. So I'm actually trying to create a mod which will simulate in the background uh, enemy um, enemy diplomatic relations, and you'll there'll be a file, I mean, uh, some kind of graphical display maybe, that you can pull up and it'll show the relations 
at a glance. And when two nations go to war, it will use my simulator. Thankfully, my simulator is available. It'll grab some of their ships and uh, they'll go to war. So <laughs> it's actually the going to war part in the you know, simulating battles where ships are sunk. That's actually going to be a very difficult thing because I'm going to have to grab the list of ships that they have from the game file. And that's, I don't, I don't think it's going to be like the easiest thing to do, unfortunately. But, but I think it's something that should happen, right? And this is actually something I'm planning for World of the Waves 2. I probably won't even release this for World of the Waves because by that, I, I won't get it done by the time World of the Waves 2 releases. World the Waves 2 releases. We got better machinery. I'm not updating my ship. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm not updating my ships. I ought to. Wow, we got 21 knots out of these things, these Vittles box. I mean, that's quite good. I'm actually a little bit scared to upgrade them. Like, what if we lose that? Director's going to be a bit expensive. Yeah. But it's not enough that dropping our rounds per gun down by one won't solve. These things even have torpedo defense. That's fantastic. <clears throat> really quite good. So yeah, the design speed of 20, but they got 21, luckily. Very good armor. I mean, I, I gotta say, I like everything about this thing. Wow, we got 24 secondary. I did not realize that. That's, this is a hell of a ship. I do want a uh, battlecruiser soon, I suppose. And the battlecruisers will perform better once I make the uh, enemies... Um, or once I make a retreating foe retreat a little bit less, the battlecruisers will probably be able to keep pace with them for a little bit longer, do a little more damage. So the whole idea of the battlecruiser was to be like the anti... Well, I guess the whole the armored cruiser was the anti-French raiding cruiser for the British. The British made the armored cruiser as a response to the French raiding cruiser. And then uh, the battlecruiser was like a response to other people's armored cruisers. All right, uh, kind of lost my train of thought. Are the verse gonna get director? Fi I guess they do. God damn it, I just, I just, nah, maybe not. <laughs> Too much work. Maybe refit these. Director firing, this is something I do think should happen. I actually have the rounds per gun to do it anyway. Okay, looks good. get all these things rebuilt even though I always say the best thing is to oh who do we want to go to war with next hmm huh I don't really want to go to war with Italy Great Britain would be a great challenge we haven't really got the budget for it I don't think I gotta say France <laughs> Going back to war with France is, like, not a bad thing. Because there's more territory we can take as soon as we get, like, you know, our battleships over to the Southeast Asia area. How are we doing, by the way, on... So we need 22,000, we have 20, 35, that's great. We still don't need much in Southeast Asia, which is really nice, considering our base capacity there is actually pretty high. A side note, by the way, just before I forget to mention this, I will have to call this video to a close. Probably around the 30 minute mark. Won't be able to spend that much time today on this recording. Yeah, so we have 56 out of 79 in Southeast Asia, but 30 out of 200. Wow, that's a lot of space left in Northeast Asia. Is that even correct? That doesn't even seem correct. Well, no, that does seem correct because we got all those. <laughs> we got all the Russian bases except for the one we can't get, which is the Russia Far East. It's actually their home area. <laughs> so we, we literally cannot conquer it, but. Wow, we've done really well. So if we go to war with Japan, well, or I guess we go to war with the uh, with Great Britain, that would be another way of conquering the last few remaining ports here. <laughs> but we have so much already that let's not worry too much about it. Let's focus on Southeast Asia. So yeah, and that means France. Let's take the Vietnamese area. Okay, so that will be our goal. I think that they were saying that we don't have enough battle cruisers or armored cruisers or whatever. What is our standing right now in the Almanac? So we have six being rebuilt. Great Britain has 14 built and building. We're doing well. We're second best only to 
well, third best, I guess, only two, the two you'd expect, Great Britain and the United States. Um, boy, we're way, we are really pretty far behind in terms of cruisers. Even uh, France's armored cruiser thing is looking pretty good. And I forgot, unfortunately, it's been a little while since my last recording. I kind of forgot all the technology that our battle cruisers can take advantage of now. Not ecstatic about the gun quality that we're able to use. What is... I don't want hidden flaws. Uh, okay, Italy doesn't have hidden flaws. What do they have? They have crap for guns. USA, what do you have? Maybe something good. <gasps> Holy cow, they have... Wait, is this where mine were built? I believe this was where mine were built. The current design that I have. Let's open the Vittlesbach, right? That was, oh, it was out of Great Britain. Well, that was a mistake. I should have built them out of the US. <laughs> it would have had better quality guns and I wouldn't would not have had any potential hidden flaws. Now, we don't know if there's any hidden flaws in that one or not. I don't, I don't, I don't remember how hidden flaws manifest themselves. Probably as just a reduced tonnage in battles or something like that. Anyway, I think we'll build our battle cruisers with 14 inch guns out of the US. And we do have, uh, yeah, the US is stacked. And we do have the super firing and all that. So this is gonna be pretty nice. I mean, the US has all that stuff sh as well. So we'll do this, superimposed, aft, double. Okay, well. What do we want out of this? Um, let's say 27 knots. We're supposed to be a little bit less armored. really care much for the conning tower. Oh, good. So we're going to get a lot of space back when we do that. Now let's jump this up a little bit. Oof. It was costly. Um, that's not a lot. Well, we can go up a little bit more. Let's make this thing 37,000 or 30,000. Now everything looks good. 12. Maybe make that 100. And when you want some more of these. Preferably not in casemates, frankly, but we can drop this down. And we can add some more torpedoes. Alright, so how does this look? The Molka class. She's four center line, super firing, broadside, everything. This is really wonderful. She's quite a nice ship. Ah. Not cramped accommodations, heck no. Short range, oh my god. What are they what are they trying to do to me? Ah Hmm. Fourteen inch guns. Okay, maybe we make this a not a very fast battle cruiser. Okay, ten point five is gonna be the <laughs> we're making some sacrifices here. I I know <laughs> it's absolutely true. Okay, can this be built? Yeah, well, you know, we'll just be really nice to the United States. Darn it, I lost it. There it is. And uh, we don't have the guns and everything. I think this is I think this is a good ship. I think we leave it here. Good. We're going to build it. I don't care if the people are upset. We want. Well, I don't know why we're going to build this many. Doesn't seem appropriate. Probably just two for now. All right, let's do it. France relations not good, but that's fine as long as the U.S. and I maintain good 
good relations were we're actually just okay with whatever else happens. As soon as these are out, these two battle cruisers, we can uh, increase our whoops. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> We're ready to go to war with France again. Now, are we actually ready to go to war with France again? I think so. We have a lot of battleships in Southeast Asia. Oh, one of these is in the wrong spot. Let's move this one to Northeast Asia. They won't get the uh, director firing, but wait. Rebuild that. I think that gives them the director, right? Yeah, good. Okay, good, 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 good. Lots of submarines that we can now use in our next. Let's check out the reliability of these things too. Pathetically weak was that must have been a, you know, complaint about our battle cruisers. Yeah, we'll do this. All right, reduces rate of final penalty for guns below eight inches and turrets. It's good. Let's see how our submarines are doing. Reliability 67, really not bad. I like above 70, but 67, just about obviously as close as you can get to 70 as, you know. I mean, 1913, I think that's pretty good. Nobody cares about the French minesweeper. Oh my gosh. Could probably build another of these battle cruisers. I'm a little nervous. What's tensions at? Four? Three. Ah, uh, okay, let's build one more. Let's build one more. Okay, that's not too bad. Get the other Brandenburg back. Wow, we really... I'm sorry, France. We really don't care about your minesweepers. Uh, okay, they're extremely upset, but that's just one intention. So it's not too bad. Yes, oil firing. Amazing. That would have been great to have on, you know, the battle cruiser we just built. So I think those three battle cruisers will be the only ones of their class. Not that three, I mean three is quite a lot. Oh gosh. Yeah, let's do it. Here we go. Wow. Wow, okay, so that paid off pretty well. Um, yeah, we'll sell the US something, especially because we're friendly and want to remain that way. And because my policy is always to accept. <laughs> Hey, good, good, good. We're definitely gonna go to war with France. Put everyone on high alert. Training is complete still, that's good. Um, we didn't update these, which were built in 1912 anyway, so they're fine. I think everyone's fine. These are all 1911, they should be able to last one more war. And we have a lot of destroyers, which honestly is the one thing I should probably continue to stock up on. Oh, these actually have mines. I forgot about that. <laughs> it's a, I think it's a good destroyer as well. So let's get a bunch of them. Eight more. Yeah, okay. Uh, by all means, oil firing, superimposed turrets on armored cruisers. Don't care about that at all. If they want to fight, we'll fight them. All right, we're back to war. <laughs> Things happen really quickly. I mean, look, we're at 1914. Was that what it was? We're back at war. We have some destroyers. Let's save and fight. And we probably won't be able to get too far into this, um, into this war. This is a big one. They're bringing out 132,000. That's the Turville. She's still kicking butt, I'm sure. All right, no major losses. Two light cruisers. One light. This is a loss for us. A big defeat, in fact. So that's a little bit unfortunate, but you know we gotta take the good with the bad, or we gotta take the bad with the good. Could always resim. That's the advantage of my simulator. You know, you don't like the result, you just get another one. <laughs> Somewhat akin to if you were just going to re. Um, wow. to redo the battle from the beginning. Yeah, this is a terrible loss for us. Not a great way to start this war. But um, maybe our new submarines can 
help out with that a little bit. I have 47 on ASW. That's, that's quite good. I wonder if we should go to unrestricted. We are blockading them, which is good. Oh my gosh, holy cow, that was a lot of damage. Okay, that's is already a good, this is a good start. <laughs> Even though we lost the first battle, they're kind of cowering in fear from us. And you know, I'm really glad we ordered those uh, <laughs> destroyers. I think we're gonna get another batch. Cruiser battle. Do we want to fight one of these? No, not one of those. That's a little bit too, like, uh, insignificant for me to deal with. Yeah, there was a battle cruiser there. No, thank you. <laughs> Probably for the best that we simulated it. More weight savings. Okay, fight battle. Uh, I think we'll just say, well, yeah, it could be a battle cruiser again. They're flaunting their battle cruisers. And probably gotta, yep, yeah, we'll gotta call this one to a close now. So this will probably be the. I'll, maybe I'll simulate one more. Will we? Oh, we actually did pretty well. Probably could have fought that one then. Okay, well, one more turn. The one more turn. So, okay, that's that's the Tourville that we had to deal with. My god, it is extremely powerful. Low on armor, but... Yeah, it's going to have four more guns than our new battle cruiser coming out. About the same tonnage. Same speed, actually. In fact, almost identical in a lot of ways, except for it's more of a true battle cruiser. Because it has less armor and, you know, lots of powerful guns still. So this will be the last one we do. I really should get to improving the merchant ship behavior. I mean the minesweeper behavior. So let's see how this battle ended up. I guess I could see in the log. 18,000 feet. That's going to be... Oh, okay. They just retreated. It was one to one. It's, that's, yeah. And, and nothing, nothing happened, basically. All right, very good. So um, that's we can take things a little bit slower now that the release date for Rule the Waves 2 is out, but I don't want to. I want to kind of plow through and then get ready for the Rule the Waves 2 tournament. I mean, the Rule the Waves tournament. So we can do a little uh, tournament with my simulator as well. For, so for now, I'm going to wrap this one up. Thanks for watching, and until the next episode. Oh, by the way, feel free to leave any comments on my simulator. I should have a link to the NWS, Naval Warfare Simulations, forum in the video description. Uh, I was uh, I started by pinning those comments, but leave any feedback you have about the simulator um, on the forum because I want to see if there's actually a lot of interest in having this. And almost like more importantly, I want the people at NWS to see if there's interest here. And if there's not, then I don't. I'm not trying to. I just think that a lot of people are interested in Auto Resolve, but that the folks at, especially the developers, aren't aren't sure that that's the case. So if you have any comments about the simulator and you want to show like kind of support of it, um, post on the NWS forum in the topic on my simulator. And uh, that'll kind of like just show that there's some interest. But yeah, until the next episode, thanks for watching and take care.